Hi everyone and welcome to this special edition of Bravery in the Boardroom. As you may be aware that um, in line with celebrating and supporting International Women's Day and International Women's Month, we are going live with a, in conversation with Laura Butler. I will let Laura introduce herself for a mo in a moment, but first of all, let me just tell you a little bit more about why we're doing this and why we want to talk about embracing equity in the boardroom. If you follow Bravery in the Boardroom, you'll know that we speak very much about wanting to see boardrooms more representative of the communities and staff that they serve. And for me, um, I was a woman in the boardroom. I was uh, the youngest director in the boardroom. When I got there, I was the only black woman at the time when I first became a director. It's really important for me that we see more of the diversity that is in our communities and that's in our staff. But it's not just about representation by sight. It's really important that we're also seeing brave leaders step forward and come into the space. And what I want to speak about today and what I want to have in the conversation with Laura is very much about how do we support our leaders at any level, but particularly our senior women leaders with leading bravely in the boardroom, but most importantly, looking after themselves as well. We hear a lot about wellness and me and Laura were just sharing before we press record that sometimes it can feel like a bit of a buzzword, but actually looking after yourself, being the best you can be and embracing your wellness is more important than ever. I'm not going to spoil it and say too much here because Laura will talk us through exactly why she does what she does to support us and also what's going on in wellness trends this year as well that we may not be connecting to when we're thinking about why wellness should be a priority for us. So let me just try and set the scene a little bit before I come to Laura. We like to keep it real in Bravery in the Boardroom and in our conversations. And for me, when we talk about leading bravely, when we talk about encouraging you to be brave, we have to take in the current context. Most of you are out there working in an extremely challenging environment, fast moving and fast growing as well. We also know that there are exceptional challenges in our home life as well, which Laura will talk about. I also want to call it out because we are real about how much of us are really practicing what we're preaching when it comes to self-care. And how do we start to think about how we incorporate this in reality and how we support our teams with it too? So let me come to Laura and introduce her. Laura is from Wellbe Coaching. I want to ask Laura loads of questions. I've got a long list in front of me. But before I do that, I'd love to ask, welcome, Laura. I'd just ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Wellbe Coaching. Thank you, Monique. Good morning. Uh, so I'm Laura Butler. I've been a life wellness and performance coach for 15 years. I'm accredited through the ILM and the, and the HCI. And I started WellBe because I was overwhelmed, burnt out and struggling as a, as a young mum. And I thought... That I'd been quite healthy up until that point mm -hmm. and I realized that actually I needed I needed more <laughs> I needed more and I wasn't um I didn't have the support that I needed and I didn't have the healthy habits that I needed to take me through the most stressful moments and so I went deeper into my coaching practice and started started Wellbe coaching okay and, and Laura just tell us a little bit how long have you been running for um, so yeah, I've been coaching for fifteen years. Uh, well-being coaching for for ten now. Okay, yeah. and I know that there are two components to what you do. So it'd be really mm -hmm. helpful before we dig in a little bit more, just to tell us a little bit about both arms of what you offer. Yeah, absolutely. So I have private clients internationally that come to me for life coaching, empowerment, self-confidence, mindset, health, habit change, lifestyle. Um, that's my, the private arm of my business um, mm -hmm. where I work one-to-one -one with clients. But then I also have the, the corporate side of my business, which is which is what WellBe focuses on. And that's where I go into organisations and support the organisations to support their teams and their staff. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, linked to that and why you started um, from that personal experience of what you were going through. I know me and you were speaking about some of the um, 
what you can describe as wellness trends, if we could use that language. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the wellness trends that are quite prominent this year. Um, mm -hmm. What would what could you tell us about that? Because I know you've I know you've spoken about that before. Yeah, absolutely. I think <clears throat> there's a few things that are going on. Really, we've been talking about well-being for for a while now, um, for a good few years. Initially, it was quite a progressive subject where only the Googles of the world were mm. you know, <laughs> embracing well-being mm. and it seemed really far out and then it became a bit of a buzzword and it started filtering through and people businesses started playing around with well-being and what that looked like um, but not necessarily getting it right and, and what mm. I'm finding now is businesses really saying well what is well-being mm. and how can we get it right because at the moment we've tried several, you know, several different things, different initiatives, different activities, but we don't seem to be seeing any improvement and we don't seem to be supporting people in the right way. And what I'm finding this year is that businesses are really taking it seriously now. They're going to be stepping forward to actually really understand what their teams need and start to give that to them. So being strategic about wellbeing, that's one of the first things. Um, and that's what we do a lot of at Wellbeing is we're, we're not just the fluffy stuff. <laughs> we're all about strategy and uh, you know metrics and measurements actually offering transformative services. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, we're not just going to rock up with a smoothie bike or you know ask you to bring your puppy to work day that is you know that's lovely but really there's no, no long-term support and transformation for the individual so I think businesses one of the big things we're going to see this year is that they're going to be digging deeper into what they actually need with yes. and look at auditing and strategy and bringing the team on board and asking them what do you need from us right now um so a lot more bespoke a lot more tailored there's going to be a lot more around remote working as well you know mm -hmm. we still don't have mm -hmm. everyone back mm -hmm. in one place mm -hmm. so how do we support the people who are still remote working and still at home where they're yes. going to be feeling isolated we don't have those water cooler or photocopier moments when you can see the whites of someone's eyes and say yes. you know yeah. are, are you okay how are you getting on mm -hmm. how's your day you know um so how do we actually support those remote workers and so one of the trends this year is very much looking at how we do that properly um <clears throat> so that's that's a big thing as well and also looking at all areas of well-being so there's with well-being a lot of people and businesses assume that it's just mental health yeah and whilst mental health is a huge part of well-being obviously it's not the be all and end all. So the actual definition of well-being is the state of being healthy, happy and comfortable. And to achieve that, we need to make sure we have balance in all the areas. Mm. So just mental health, but, you know, social well-being, digital well-being, nutritional, physical and um, financial there's all these different aspects of well-being. So when I say digital, you know, what is your relationship with your screen? How many mm. hours are you spending on a screen? How is that affecting you? And then again, financial well-being, that's huge. Just because it's 9 a.m. doesn't mean that your money worries stop at that office door. You know, it's so going to be carried on so throughout true. the day. You've got someone who's struggling with um, financial pressures that's going to be impacting their productivity and their work and their mental health and um, so much more. So businesses will be looking at all these other areas of well-being not just focusing on mental health yeah thank you Laura there, gosh there's a lot you said there um that I know will resonate with a lot of what you said there will resonate with our audience and I just want to unpack it a little bit if I, if I may so just to help us understand a little bit more when you said about um we have a strategic you have a strategic approach and like mm -hmm. you said just being able to provide organizations with support on metrics Mm -hmm. So just tell just tell me a little bit more about that, because I, I think I understand what you're saying in terms of it's nice to have some well-being initiatives. Of course it mm -hmm. is. But are you saying like how do you know it's making a difference? Yeah, absolutely. How do you know it's making a difference? So with when it comes to well-being initiatives, it's a very symbiotic relationship. So the business needs to be able to 
say, yep, guys, I'm going to put these things on for you. This is in place for you. This is for you to access um, support. But the individuals need to put their hands up and say, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to access that support and I'm going to um, make the most of what's being offered to me. So in the first place, um, the, the right thing needs to be offered because, you know, otherwise it's, it's not going to be helping the right people. So the right thing needs to be offered by the business. Um, but also there needs to be a culture where businesses, where individuals feel like they can access that support. Yes. yes. And that they can start to, um, you know, change their behaviours within work. I think we were saying before um, around, you know, that starts really from, from the top down, the culture. Mm -hmm. If you've always sent emails on holiday or you've never taken a lunch break or, you know, these kinds of things, really make a difference if the leaders in the organization are are doing those things then it feels like everyone else has to so with well-being it really needs to be championed from the top down and it need to, needs to filter down through the culture so i think um one of the things we talk about in bravery, bravery in the boardroom and if i'm asked i always talk about when people say well how do i put brave leadership into practice what can i do one of the simplest responses I give to that is lead by example, walk the talk. So picking up on what you were saying there about, you know, showing the importance and priority of well-being coming from the top, senior leaders actually looking after their well-being, demonstrating good, demonstrating behaviour that supports self-care. Mm -hmm. If I said it in that way, you gave that example of, you know, not checking emails when you're away, as an example. Um, just if I come to you with the challenge, though, and say, I'm a senior leader in a busy NHS environment right now, busy NHS hospital. I get it, but I just don't have the time. What would you say to me? I would say, what's the minimum that you can commit to each week? You know, I get it. You've, you've got a lot going on and your priority is to, to show up and to work and to, to lead. Um, but firstly, what's the minimum that you can commit to for yourself? Because no matter how small that is, even just little micro habits are going to make a huge difference to the trajectory of your health and well-being compounded over a period of time. So even if it feels like the smallest thing in a day, if it's five minutes of meditation or a quick brisk walk around the block before, you know, before you start work or after work, whatever it is. If you can just start to implement one thing, even if it's one thing a day as a micro habit, you know, and think about what could be the most pivotal for you. What's the needle mover for you? Um, everyone's different. You know, for me, I love a cold water dip. So I've got a barrel in the garden and I know all I need to do in the morning is five minutes in there with a cup of tea. And that sets me up for the day. And, you know, if I can't do anything else for myself, at least I've done that in the morning mm -hmm. and I get to lean into that in times of stress and overwhelm, overwhelm mm. rather than picking up a bottle of wine on the way home from work. Um, so what is the minimum that you could pleasurably commit to each week that doesn't feel like you're adding something extra to do as a stressor? Yeah. What's yes. going to help you really um, de-stress? And then my thought really around that is how can we, we, we reframe it? So it's very much around the mindset of, am I, am I worthy enough for those five minutes? Mm -hmm. Do I deserve them? Well, mm -hmm. hell yes, you do. Because not only are you working really hard, but actually, if you continue to push and to push and to push, and you're not replenishing the body and allowing it to rest, then you need to think about again the trajectory of your own health and well-being who's not getting the best version of you yeah whether yeah. that be at home whether it be at work and so these little things that we can put in place each day if you can again there's so many different things that you could do that only take five to ten minutes just really short small micro habits that could really boost your health and well-being and make sure that you know, you're going to keep going and you're not going to get into the danger zone of overwhelm, but you're also, you know, everyone around you is going to get the best, better version of you.
loved that, Laura. Really loved that. Love what you're saying there. Hard hitting, but mm -hmm. um, feels feels like it feels like a bit more realistic about what we can do and why isn't it? Why it's so important. So building off from that, because you mentioned about initiatives and teams as well, mm -hmm. I just want to ask the really um, blunt question. Is it as simple as um, just asking our teams, you know, what is it you want and what would help you? Because you mentioned it and it's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Initiatives just flood through over and over again. I know that during my time when I was um, an NHS director, I sat in many a meeting and committee where the comments were, you know, people aren't taking this initiative up. They're not taking that initiative up. We're going to send more out. We're going to send more in a newsletter. We're going to push it out on an email. And actually, most of our frontline colleagues didn't access their emails in that way. As you say, those initiatives weren't quite right for them. And it just felt like people were missing the opportunity to simply ask. But <laughs> I genuinely want to check in. Is it as simple as just asking what is it you want and what would help you? Pretty much, pretty much. And that brings me back to the question you saying before around, you know, measuring and, and strategy. Mm. I would always recommend you first ask the question. And this is one thing that we do at Wellbe is we do wellbeing audits. So with teams and organisations, we go in and we look at, where you are right now what you have been offering what has and hasn't been working what's the culture like what you know really get under the skin of where the business or you know the organization is right now and what's going on because they'll be doing there'll be things you're doing really well as well yeah so um we want to really understand and then ask ask the team and um, we have a really comprehensive survey that we send out and it just brings back the best results. And from that, we can make recommendations and suggestions that, you know, are either run in-house and don't really cost that much that, you know, there are initiatives yeah. you can run in-house as an organisation um, or advice for external third party support as well. But the, how do you know what to give people unless we ask? It sounds like I said, it sounds obvious, but um, it's important to ask that just to build on what you're saying, because obviously, like you said, you as a as an organization, you're working with different teams, different individuals. Um, you'll be hearing and seeing some trends in what information you're getting back. Just to dig into that a little bit more. What are you seeing and hearing as the main barriers women are facing in prioritizing well-being, both for themselves and for their teams? So for women, I always find that it comes down to their own self-worth and their, their mindset around everyone else needs me and everyone else goes first. And I'm usually the one doing everything for everyone else and I'm the one at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's being able to help women understand that, again, this this actually, if I can be the best version of me, then everyone else gets a better version of me. Yes. Rather than giving to everyone else first and then have nothing, having nothing left for yourself. Um, and one story that I give of this, because my my biggest driver for going deeper into my coaching practice when I was overwhelmed and retraining in, in well-being, health and well-being was because I'd had my daughter and I thought I don't want her to come to me in 20 years mm -hmm. and say mum I'm so overwhelmed I'm stressed mm -hmm. max there's all this pressure I can't find any time for myself just you know can't pick herself up off the floor because I was thinking you know the most important thing in my life in in the world to me mm -hmm. I want her to naturally just be you know looking after herself, exercising, taking the time for herself without any guilt, without any fear that she's upsetting anyone else or any thought that she's not worthy enough. And so I thought, I've, if I want that to change, I have to change it in me and I have to change it now because I have to model this to her. It's got to be normal to her that mummy goes for a run or goes to yoga class and I need to really show her that it's okay. Just take a bath in the middle of the day on a Saturday. Why not? Like, let's do that. It feels luxurious. Good. Why not? We deserve it, you know? Yes. I want to model those things to her so that she doesn't end up in the same situation that I was in. Mm -hmm. So I think with women, 
we hold everyone else up yeah. and we put everyone else first yes and actually it's not wrong to to put ourselves first mm. we need to drop the guilt oh so powerful what you just shared there and it connects back to what you were saying about permission because mm -hmm. I know when we were speaking earlier you said as well as having initiatives as well as leading by example it's also about teams and and, and staff feeling like they have permission Mm -hmm. to look after their well-being and to access initiatives and I hear the same message what you've just said there about as women let's give ourselves permission let's yeah. give ourselves permission to um I had a I had I, I was talking about this with a coaching client last week actually and it was saying about I, I was asking her to reframe and mm -hmm. to actually put herself at the top of her responsibility list mm -hmm. you know because exactly what you're describing actually what about if you're most responsible you're most responsible to yourself first and foremost and as you say being at your best self means you can serve all who you want to ever better you know mm -hmm. I think the reality of what we're talking about though and let me call it out we're not saying here that being able to prioritize five or ten minutes a day is going to solve every challenge or problem that you're facing in deeply challenging environments or if you're very close to burnout that's not what we're saying here what we're speaking about here, though, is how if you are in this space, you can start to prioritize your well-being and how you can build those. What did you call it? Micro habits. Yeah. How you can build some of those micro habits up. You may be facing bigger and deeper challenges that this won't support you with. And that's not what we're talking about. And I just want to make that clear. Yeah. But I really hear what you're saying there about leading by example, not from a pressure perspective, but from a we've got women we've got leaders at all levels who will be listening to this who want to be the best leader who they can who want to serve their teams and their organization in the best way and what I'm hearing from you here is get your well-being right too and show and demonstrate how you're doing that advocate mm -hmm. for balance is what I'm hearing from you as yeah. well you know and I think let's call that out because you may be working in an environment where the leadership above your head you know the more senior leadership to where you are even if you are in the boardroom your colleagues around you are not prioritizing balance mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. are not leading in an inclusive way you know very much command and control very much the uh, traditional autocratic kind of behavior mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and as you said you used the term before about fluffy seeing wellness as just being fluffy what we're talking about here is whatever you are in charge of you can create an environment within that space. You may not be able to change everything going on in the culture around you, and it's important to call that out, but you will have some control and influence over the team or space that you are in charge of. And if you lead by example in that space, you will make a difference to the people you are serving and others will see it. Sometimes it just takes one person to be brave enough to say, actually, I am going to say that I'm not checking my emails over the weekends, you know, unless it's mission critical. I am going to be the person who says and speaks openly about what I do to prioritize my well-being. I'm going to be that first person. And sometimes we're surprised, you know, many are waiting behind us. They just weren't brave enough mm -hmm. to be the one to voice it. So I think what you shared there, I hope we encourage some of our listeners and viewers today if you are there and you are practicing well-being or you are looking for that encouragement to just get it moving a bit more with your micro mm -hmm. habit, I hope this encourages you to do it. But I also want to encourage you to be a little bit braver and also share what you're doing with others as well. It does make a difference. And it's something that I did with my own team, especially when we went um, hybrid and everyone mm -hmm. was most people were working remotely. It was really important, I felt, to have that daily check in. We had a short and sharp call. But the call was asking, how are you? How yeah. are you? You know, ha what's on your plate for today? Something good that happened yesterday. It wasn't just about work. And actually, by asking those questions, me and my assistant director were able to gauge quite quickly how people were and actually how their workloads are panning out. We didn't need to dig into it on that check-in, but actually we could all come together and people sparked off it. So if someone was really up and you know something good had happened, we'd celebrate that win with them. If you could hear someone had had a really difficult moment, actually colleagues would sort of jump on a call with them after and just say, oh, I just heard you say that, are you okay, what's going on? 
So mm. actually being able to share that together and think about a way that we could do that when everybody wasn't at the water cooler, when you couldn't mm. always see the real whites of someone up, someone's eyes is important. And that's why I wanted us to have a conversation today about the reality of trying to focus on wellness and well-being when it is challenging, when it is fast moving, when the to-do list feels way too long. Mm-hmm. How, how can you navigate through that and still prioritise it? But I love what you've shared with us about also our responsibility, you know, mm-hmm. as mums, as, as female leaders, and as us wanting to show and demonstrate that actually this is a good thing to do and it's good to incorporate wellness and well-being into your daily lives. I really love what you shared with us there. So thank you, Laura. Thank you. That, that piece is really important because you're right, exactly what you said at the beginning there. What can we do? There's a lot mm. that maybe we can't do <laughs> that we'd like to do. Um, you know, long, luxurious <laughs> walks or, you know, yoga or bubble baths or whatever it might be. There might be lots of things that we want to do that we can't quite seem to get around to. What is it we can do? And what are the things that we can focus on that will be really positive for us? And I have um, four power principles when it comes to well-being because for me, it's about, we can't, we just can't perform at our best if we're not happy, healthy and comfortable, if we're not in balance, if we're not feeling, um, you know, well. And yeah. so how are we going to get our bodies and our minds up to speed with our ambition and mm-hmm. with where we want to go in the world and with what we want to achieve and the full expression of life that we want, right? So whether that be at work or at home, and that's what's really important Uh, for me is to address the individual because it's not just about well-being in the workplace it's about yes I'm doing this for me okay so what can I do even if there isn't something at work that I can access what are the small things I can do for me and the four power principles for me are food because if we can fuel our bodies in the right way and get to understand what our bodies need breakfast lunch dinner or whatever meals a day you have for you and you know get to understand that a bit more protein there gets me going a bit longer and I feel you know I've got more energy in the afternoon and actually I know that if I have something sugary at breakfast I have got these energy slumps mid-morning you know it's those mm. kind of things understanding how to fuel your body with food movement is brilliant because again, you get all the the feel good hormones, happy hormones every time you exercise, it gets you feeling stronger. Movement actually moves through emotions. So if you're feeling stressed, I think it's Tony Robbins said, if you wanna change the emotion, change the motion. So get Mm -hmm. up, get Mm -hmm. out, move around, you know, dance it off if you need to. Um, Self-care is a big one. So again, what are some of the small things that you could do, whether it be little breathing techniques throughout the day or like I said, five minute meditation or get your partner to give you a foot rub, whatever it is for you. Self-care mm. is important. And then the last one is mindset. Mm. So again, we talked about reframing. For for me, it is, okay, I can't do that. So what can I do? And again, going deep into why this is important for me to to do this for me and my life and the people yes. that I love around me. Um, and the the big thing that I love, um, the big reframe that I love from when I talk about mindset, I always say about the get to got to. So there's so many things that we're like, oh, I have I have to do this. I have to do, mm-hmm. to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to take the kids. I've got to go to work. I've got to you know do these emails. What if we switch that to I get to, you know, mm-hmm. I get to in the house because I have a beautiful home you know I get to make the dinner because I have children that I you know have to feed yeah yeah not any other way I get to go to work because I have a job that you know I love and it pays me and you know all these things how can we reframe it so the get to got to always helps me in those moments as well so those four power principles are food movement self-care and mindset Brilliant, brilliant. No, really, really helpful and really practical as well, actually. And that's another thing that I was speaking to you about, isn't it? I really wanted our conversation 
to not just be about the theory and just that, you know, but actually what are the practical tips that someone listening today can actually take away and start to do. And I really think you've helped us with that. Thank you so much, Laura. So before we finish up, most importantly, how do people get in touch with you if they'd like to find out more, hear more from you and find out more about the support you offer? Absolutely. So you can either visit the website, wellbecoaching.co.uk, drop me an email, laura at laurabutlercoaching.co.uk. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn and, uh, and Instagram, so I'm sure you'll find me there. Brilliant. And we will make sure we post the links to get in touch with you as well when we post the video. But thank you so much for your time, Laura, today. It's been a brilliant conversation. And I think this will help a lot of our Bravery in the Boardroom movement members with how what they can do to start prioritising their well-being. But also, more importantly, and most importantly, also as a leader, um, what they can do to embody prioritising wellness and also what they can do to start supporting their teams too. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thanks for having me.